the defendant, Ernie Wayne Tertelgit. He is not represented by counsel here today. Um, Mr. Tertelgit has been charged with two misdemeanor offenses, which we'll be trying today. I must object. I am not the name that he is referring to. I am the living man. The name that Mr. Riley refers to, ma'am, is held by the state in all capital letters and is identified by the state on the state's driver's license, ma'am. I am not the all capital fiction. I am the living man whose mark is that of life. It is called a signature, and the nature of that sigil, ma'am, is the living person. It is never in all capital letters. Mr. Cattaldi, you will allow Mr. Riley to continue with the and you will have a I must to object, ma'am. Without proper evidence of oath and bond as required, and I am backed, ma'am, by 20 United States Supreme Court cases to this end, it should have been brought to my hand more than a month ago, and no evidence has been brought forward of any competency of any of this. I have to speak for myself, ma'am. No one here is capable of doing it, and particularly those that are bar or non-bar. They can only speak, ma'am, to the legal. My interest is to forfend my person's living name. Your Honor, this is an improper objection and violation of the motion to eliminate. The objection is, Mr. Cataldo, you are not to interrupt Mr. Riley again. Ma'am? He gets past his 30 minutes. Then you will have a Who can tell the living man in a commercial event such as this, Sir? Who has the right to tell the living man when he can speak and when he cannot speak, what sounds he can make and what sounds he cannot make? He is addressing British law, ma'am. He is a minister on behalf of Great Britain. I'm going to hold you with contempt if you continue to disrupt this. Ma'am, without oath and bond, contempt has already been established here. In face of all these witnesses, ma'am, where is where is the evidence of oath and bond, ma'am? Look. How do you continue to disrupt? The requirement is right here, ma'am. It is through all ranks of the court, ma'am. I have done due diligence and due process, ma'am. Eye to eye, I faced those who would come against me. I communicated properly. I backed up my work. I backed up the research. It's nice and neat. And I have total failure. I have total incompetency of the court because there is no evidence of Mr. Riley's office, nor of yours, ma'am, nor of this lady's here, nor even the fine police officers that are here today. I have nothing to work with now. Now I'm out here hanging over the abyss. I must make my own way. And you will be allowed that, but allow Mr. Riley. Why, please give me an honorable answer, is a British recognized esquire asking questions in an American courtroom. Why is title of nobility applied behind this gentleman's name that is recognized as being banned from our country in the 1789 Constitution? Is nobody going to stand for our Constitution? Allow this, I'm you I cannot, ma'am. In honor of the Constitution of the United States, I cannot allow a man who carries British recognition for the purposes of British ministerial law to continue to persecute me. I cannot, ma'am. I have to honor the, the founders, ma'am. I honor the memory of those who fought and died that we could be free of this very type of thing. Stand up. If I stand up, I give you recognition. Oh, please stand up. All right. Stand up. No, stand up. pick me up. I cannot give you recognition. I'm constrained by the United States Constitution of 1789. Sir, you're a Bozeman native. What are you doing back in a British recognition? You should be ashamed of yourself. Gentlemen, this is an overthrow of the 1789 Constitution. An overthrow of the Bill of Rights. It is an overthrow of Title 26, United States Code, and above all, it is an overthrow of universal law. Would, would one of you remove my ball tie and return it to somebody in the crowd, please, so that it doesn't disappear from this place? We'll take care of that in a moment, okay? See to it, my stuff makes it back in my bag. I do have a duly appointed court representative, ma'am. Yes. He has made his way through everything. Okay. He will speak as my voice. Bye. No, 
O man, I stand as myself and speak for myself in myself. And I am not the trustee over the old calf's name that you're operating on. But you're here in court today because you were charged with some charges. I'm here in court today because I am making a special visitation. This is not an appearance, only spirits appear. Living men, living persons make special visitation. That's why I'm here to make sure that you guys don't tender my truthful, proper name. Do you still live at 28 Flying Eagle in Manhattan? That is a storage unit that I sleep in from time to time. All right. I live in myself in this body. I am the living man. Falgate, you were here, you were seen by Mr. Cutts on 9-3 of 13, and you asked, at that time he appointed you a public defender. Did you apply for the public defender? What use have I for a voice of ruin? They can only speak fictitious legalese to you. I speak natural living man's English to you. It's called common English. That's the only thing that I work in. That's fine. There will be no legalese used here. <coughs> well, you were charged on the 31st of August of 2013 with obstructing a police officer in violation of 457302. You were also charged on the same date with resisting arrest in violation of 457-301 of the Montana Code. Those men were charged by me right back by staging an overthrow of the Constitution of 1789, an overthrow of the Bill of Rights, an overthrow of my rights to forage for food as a natural living person who was in hunger. I was searching for something to put in my stomach as I am recognized to be allowed to do by universal law it has nothing to do with your corporate fiction. They violated everything, and furthermore, for your knowledge, they violated Judge Holly Brown's Title 26 United States Code ruling, which I went before her and prevailed on 21st March 2011. EP09-58A is the case number wherein she evidenced that I am not a taxpayer because I am not a federal citizen. Federal law trumps state law at every turn. I have nine judge rulings to that end, and that trumps state law. I am not registered crap. I am the living man, and I have the right to forage for food when I'm hungry. All right. But you're here on different charges. That this is, is not what Holly Brown's courtroom. Ma'am, you can argue this all day long. You're operating on I'm a telling, corporate fiction. I'm telling you, you're here on some charges which were filed in three forks. I do not number understand one, those charges. Number one, you keep interrupting me, and I'm going to charge you with contempt, and you'll go to oh, jail. Contempt of court is spelled C-O-double-A, and I know about calling this navigation. Sir, contempt is the storm. I said, be Don't quiet touch until me. I get Don't through with Don't touch me. You ain't a god. Don't Officer? you touch me. I am the living man protected by universal law. You, you keep talking, down. and you're going to be charged with contempt, and you're going to go to jail. You have already contempted this place. No, I told you I would if you did You're trying to get down talk. here. These are the living witnesses to what you're trying to do. Very you good. are trying to create a fictitious, fraudulent action. You are trying to bilk the Federal Reserve by securitizing Sir? an all-caps commercialized name Sir? and notifying them that they, that they are standing in debt now. If you touch me, you will violate natural law. Do not come near me. I am protected by the land. Don't yeah, tell me to shut up! I am the living natural man, and my voice will be heard. That is the Jolly Roger. That thing you call the American flag with the gold fringe around it is the Jolly Roger, and you are acting as one of his privateers. Okay. You're here on the charge of arrest. Resisting I'm here arrest. by a special visitation. Right. And I've never let you get away with this, but I'm officer. here. To each charge, could be up to a $500 fine, up to six months in jail. I do not understand any charges. 
I only understand universal law and the right to live. Well, to live in peace guilty. and to live as I need to. You pled not guilty in this in this. I court. never plead. Animals plead. Sound like bah, oink oink. I have a paper with your signature on it, sir. It says prime evidence standing right through it. You bring forward all natural right. forms of evidence that I'm not prime evidence. I am the living soil. The dirt, the water, and the air has its own voice, does it not? It all supports sir? forms of life, does it not? I am a part of that life. I am not your corporate fiction. Sir? Do not tender me. You're here today on an omnibus hearing. You've already pled not guilty. I am guilty. here by special visitation to see to it that you do not tender my natural living man's name. Are you prepared That's why to tell I'm the here. court if you wish to go to trial on this matter? This is a trial. Tell no, me it's this not. isn't a trial. Here's my this jury of my peers. Hearing, you cannot produce a jury of my peers because all juries are selected from a pool of registered voters, and the instant a person registers to vote, their natural ability is appear to comprehend natural law has been dissolved and okay. turned into fiction. There cannot be raised a jury of my peers. It cannot be done. Excuse me for just a moment. No way. Get back here and finish this. Hey, hey, get back here and finish this. The judge has left the courtroom. There you go. You won. Yeah. There is nobody in this courtroom. Yeah. The witness. judge has yeah. walked out. The judge has walked out. Everybody I've up said and no out. excuse. Everybody up and out. I'm not letting you up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. All the man. Case to <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she abandoned the court. Let's go. Get out of I like to think, and the sooner the better, of a cybernetic meadow where mammals and computers live together in mutually programming harmony like pure water touching clear sky. I like to think, right now please, of a cybernetic forest filled with pines and electronics where deer stole peacefully past computers as if they were flowers with spinning blossoms. I like to think it has to be of a cybernetic ecology where we are free of our labors and joined back to nature, returned to our mammal brothers and sisters, and all watched over by machines of loving grace. <laughs>